opportunity to make a name for myself. They felt as if it was an opportunity to get on God's honorary list. But I'm so glad Jesus taught them it is not about individual work, but it's about working together. It's not about making a name for myself, but it's about fulfilling God's mission and purpose. Can I say then that your theme carries serious implications? Because if you're going to be bonded together, if you're going to be securely joined together, then there is no room for striving. Have mercy. I said there is no room for politicizing. Have mercy. I said there is no room for superstardom. There is no room for insecurity. For too long, we have allowed these to rob God of the service due to him. For too long, we have tried to make a name for ourselves that we do not make the name of Jesus exalted. But I'm glad and like Simeon, I see the dawning of a brand new day. I see the consolation of God's church that there's a bunch of ministers. There's a bunch of men who are saying, no longer will it be about me and getting the centurion's award. I will work to see to it that God's mission is fulfilled. No longer will I tear down in order to get in office, but I will build up the work of God. Are you still out there? You see, beloved friends, I don't know if we truly understand the importance of Christian unity. And so instead of saying it myself, I want to draw on the words of Jesus. You see, Jesus, in John chapter 17, if you have never heard of the will and last, the last will and testament of Jesus, then read John 17. If you want to hear Jesus' will and what he has left for us, then go to John 17. But in the interest of time, I'll be focusing on verses 20 to 23. Here's what the word of God says. The Bible says, Jesus speaking, neither pray I for these alone, have mercy, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word that's going to die, that they all may be one, as though Father art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. If you did not see it, let me make it plain. That the only way that God's mission, you remember, Pastor Nevin said it right. You see, when God spoke, he may not have said it to you clearly, but I want to help you understand uh, that as you have shared with us, uh, it's a united effort that brought us into being. Are you still with me? It, it was God, the Father, I believe, in my sanctified imagination, uh, who spoke, I believe, as the Bible says, uh, the Holy Spirit moved into action. Uh, and like Colossians says, it is Christ to whom uh, all things are made. Uh, it was a united mission. Uh, and if we are to be successful uh, in carrying on the legacy of Jesus, uh, then we have to be united. Unity is the hallmark of Christianity and the fuel for mission. I said again, I said unity is the hallmark of Christianity and the fuel for mission. Can I tell you that what John 17 says has serious implications? Because when we are disunited, we deny the existence of Jesus. I want that to sink in into the minds of pastors and those online because our calling is to declare Jesus. Our calling is to lift up Jesus. But when we are disunited, we deny the existence of Jesus. Jesus said in verse 21 and 22, he says, that the world may believe, let their unity be the proof that I exist and that I did what I did and that they are working with me. So when we tear down each other, we are worse than the atheists. Because we're denying the very existence. We are uprooting past the things. All that Jesus did, we are uprooting. No wonder Jesus had such a burden on his heart that before he died, he begged his father. He said, let them be one, even as we share oneness. Because if they are not one, Recording in progress. 
Because, because there's no unity, unity. Nothing, nothing exists. exists. But that's not that's not all. I'll give you one more in the interest of time. I had three, but I'll give you just one more. Pastor Walker, I know I don't want to delay the flight and they miss it. So I'm going to send them over. But secondly, when we are disunited, we rob God of the service and worship due to his name. So Pastor Nevins, when I fight against you to get the office, or when I put you down in order to become centurion, I am killing what God wanted to plant through you. I am blocking the souls that God wanted to save through you. And even though I'm centurion, God gets a hundred instead of two hundred. And so by our efforts, we are, we are undoing the work instead of doing the work. But the reverse is true, as Acts chapter 1 and 2 will tell us. Because the day of Pentecost shows the power of Christian unity. You remember that power came when they went into the upper room. You remember the Holy Spirit came when they were in one accord. You remember that the Bible stressed it, that they continued in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship. So there was not only quantitative growth, but qualitative growth, not just a bunch of people that we throw underwater, but disciples who are born for the kingdom. I say to you, uh, men of God, let's not just use it as a theme, uh, but let our lives reflect uh, that we are bonded together, that we're securely joined together, that as an army for Jesus, uh, we can march forward united. Uh, we can receive the power of God's spirit uh, to do more than any other group has ever done, not to show them up, but because Jesus said that's what he would do. I pray today that we'll be bonded together, securely joined together in one mind, one mission, and one purpose. Pastor Walker, land the fly for us in Jesus' name. Amen. God has indeed been filling us with his word. And Pastor Nevings reminded us that we need to have the experience of God's creative power in our lives. We need to accept him as creator and find our purpose for existence. Pastor Richard, uh, after being grounded in Christ, Pastor Richard goes on to say, look, it is the, the love and the grace and it is at Calvary that we find the glue that bond us together. And that glue is the love and the redeeming power of Jesus. And I think we are ready. We are ready for mission. We, we are prepared for mission. So, so I noticed that Pastor Nevings went to the Old Testament. Uh, Pastor uh, Richards went to the New Testament. Uh, let, let me go to the book of Revelation because uh, uh, you, you see uh, the, the, the prophetic portions of scripture uh, have a way of propelling us into mission. And that is what I intend to do just now. Revelation chapter 10, the, the, the Bible there says, I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun, and his feet like pillars of fire. Why am I reading this verse? You see, I am going somewhere. This mighty angel is identified as Christ himself. Revelation 1 verses 14 and 15. Eyes like fire, feet like brass. Christ is the one who gives us our commission. Uh, he was standing on the land and on the sea. You see, the scope of our mission is universal. The, our mission is not for a, a little corner somewhere. Everywhere there is a human society, we need to march with the gospel mission. The Bible tells us that he had a little book opened in his hand. He had a little book open in his hand. This, we are told, is a little scroll. You see, the last time we heard about a book that was closed what the, was the prophecies of Daniel. And so this is pointing to the, 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 the greatest religious awakening that took place in earth on earth the the the, the advent mission, the, the, the Millerite movement, they, they took the little book, prophecies of Daniel relating specifically to the two. 
2,300 days uh, time prophecies. And, they, and, and that was the, was the book opened in the hand of the mighty angel. The mighty angel did something. He, and the Bible says in verse 6, and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in them, and the sea and the things that are in them, that there should be delay no longer. There should be time no longer, delay no longer. There will be no more time prophecy after 1844. The time prophecies were opened. The, the, the Millerite uh, studied carefully Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 8, Daniel chapter 11, Daniel chapter 12. And Daniel chapter 7 and 12 reminds us that the 1260 years started 538 AD and finished AD 1798. Daniel chapter 12 tells us the, 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 the 1290 years started 538. 08 and finished 1798. Daniel 12 tells us that the 1335 years started as well in 508 and finished in 1844. And Daniel chapter 8 says that the 2300 days connected to Daniel chapter 9 began in 457 BC and ended in 1844 when the sanctuary was cleansed. After 1844, there is no more time prophecy. Absolutely no more time prophecy. And in a little while, he that will come will come and will not tarry. But the Bible goes on to say in Revelation 10, verse 8, Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. So I went to the angel and he said to me, I uh, said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take it. And, uh, and it will make your stomach bitter, but it will be uh, sweet uh, 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 as only in your mouth. Oh, do you see? Then the, John goes on to say, then I took the book out of the angels and, and ate it. And it was sweet as only in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. Do you see? It, it was sweet in the mouth. And, and this represents the, the studying of the prophet of the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. They, and, and, and I want you, you to know too that, that this eating in, uh, 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 and finding the sweetness in the prophecy, the eating, the, the studying of the prophecy uh, was so sweet that they had to share it. They, they, they shared it with their friends. They shared it with their neighbors. The, the prophetic word cannot be contained in our heart because when we understand how near time is, we want our neighbors to know. We want our friends to know. We want our families to know because we want all men to be saved. The sweetness is the assurance. It's the, it's the expectation that Jesus is coming. He's coming for his people. He's coming to take them out of a sin-cursed earth. He's coming to take them to his kingdom. It's a sweet message. But it was bitter in the belly. Jesus did not come. One lady who was present, Henry Emma, said that we were, we were struck with disappointment and we lay in bed for days. It was a bitter belly experience, but it was not the end. Because the Bible says in the next verse, and he said unto me, you must prophesy again about uh, unto many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Now, uh, the, you can see the problem in this verse. How is it that it is saying you must prophesy again? Then when did John prophesy before? You see, that sweet mouth experience that I'm, that I'm telling you about. When, when you eat the prophetic message, when you, when you understand how close we are to the kingdom, you will share it. And so the sharing of it, the eating of it, and the sharing of it at that point was the, was the first prophesying. But you must prophesy again. You see... When we say we are prepared for mission, it means we have been made ready for mission. We have been trained for mission. We have been warmed up for mission. We have been grounded in Christ, the highest messenger, the mighty angel. We, we, have, been, we, are, we, are, we, are, we have been bonded together by the prophetic truth. We accept the call to prophesy again. And when I look at the Greek here, they say, Pauline, Prophet to Sai, 
the, 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 the first term of your day, it, is, it, it suggests that it is necessary. The Savior is the you, necessary for you. And the, the prophet Pusai is, is an is a Aries infinitive to prophesy. It is necessary for you to prophesy again. Why is it necessary? You see, this prophesy again it means to speak under the influence of divine inspiration. When you go down into the prophetic word, you, you, you find inspiration through the Holy Spirit to speak the message. And so the message is so sweet that you can't keep it to yourself. You, you run from, from place to place sharing the word uh, because you have been prepared. You have, you have been grounded in Christ. You understand the purpose for your existence. You, you understand the prior of Christ for unity. And, and you understand the prophetic truth. He ate it. Kates Theo. We are told that this term for eat is more emphatic than estio. It means to consume completely. Study the prophecies completely. Study them because we are going to, we, we have been prophesying. We start to prophesy again now. The chapter did not tell us the content of what we are to prophesy, but we will have to move over to Revelation 14 verses 6 to 12 to, to get the content of what we must prophesy. Having been grounded in Christ, having received our commission from the highest angel, having been, been bonded together by his love and by the prophetic truth, we are now prepared to declare the dust, say the Lord. Preach the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And this content of our, of our message, Revelation 14, 6 to, to, to 12. This is the present truth. There are three things there. One, the, 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 the angel, first angel, has the everlasting gospel. That's the ever-present truth. Every time God come to preach to man, the ever-present truth is involved. And so let us not get caught up with the present truth until we forget the ever-present truth. Preach the whole truth, the present truth, and the ever-present truth. Fear God. Give glory to him. Because the hour of his judgment has come. So we must understand the judgment that is going on. Worship him. Create a worship. The Sabbath. Uh, and then the second angel has an announcement. Babylon is falling. The conglomerate man-made system of religious confusion uh, uh, is no longer fulfilling God's purpose. And can't fulfill God's purpose uh, in, in these end times. And then there's a warning. The greatest warning ever found in the Bible. Worshipping the beast's power will incur God's wrath. But thanks be to God, we can be found on the side of faith and obedience. We can be those who have the faith of Jesus and keep the commandments of God. And so prophesy again tells us that if we are going to move out, we need first to connect with the mighty angel. We need to be bonded together in this prophetic truth. And I want us to know that as we preach this message, as we go out into mission, we must go under as the sense of the momentous event of Revelation 11, 1 and 2. Revelation 11, 1 and 2 tells us that there is a work of measurement going on since 1844. A work of measurement going on. Let us understand the truth. And realize that, that Christ is the one who has given us our commission. And we are to unite in the truth as we go for mission. Is it your desire by the grace of God to stand firm on this prophetic platform? Is it your desire by the grace of God to, to, to accept this special call from Jesus, the mighty angel, and unite? one and all, as we go out to do his mission. If this is your desire this evening, just raise your right hand. Just raise your right hand. Oh Lord, bless us and direct us and guide us into your mission for Christ's sake. God bless you. Amen and amen.
I have landed, I've reached my destination. Um, if you have reached your destination, I want you to put in the chat reach. And if you don't want to type it out, you can put R. Uh, it signifies that you reach your destination. Um, I want to say thank you very much to all the speakers. We would like to say thank you very much to all the speakers. I have been blessed personally and honestly. I have really been blessed by um, both our all pastors, pastors, uh, Pastor Walker and Pastor Nevins and Pastor Richards as well. We want to say again a big thank you and 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 also for taking the time out from your wives to be with us because I recognize and never need to mention and wives and so we want to thank the wives as well for the opportunity and to have their husband and being here to and to share with us and I try and hope that we personal individually we would have basically received something I received something I never spoke about our existence. Um, excuse me, our very existence is grounded in Christ and we were created for Jesus. And Pastor Richard said, we, we cannot do anything alone. Um, it's about Jesus. And if we seek to bring on the mission of Christ, we must be united. And also unity is the, is the hallmark of Christianity. And Pastor Walker would have given us the 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 the, the, the the sweet part as well, and and I would I would help us to know that if we really have if we really have tasted and see that Christ is good, then we would want to go and share Him with others as well. And so we want to thank you um, very much. We're inviting you tomorrow um, to be with us. We begin at nine tomorrow, and we are looking forward to have you here with us as we continue being refreshed in the presence of God with a different segment that we have uh, prepared just for you in mind. With that said, let us pray. So we begin 9.30 tomorrow and you are invited. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. We thank you, Lord, that you have prepared us to be at this place where we can hear your words, oh God, melting our hearts and, and, and preparing our minds and, and letting us know the reason for our existence. Sometimes we think we exist to do our own thing, but, but your speakers have reminded us that we are in existence because of Jesus Christ and we are his uh, by uh, creation and also by redemption. And so we own, and so we owe him everything, dear Lord. And so we ask you tonight, that you will strengthen us, that you will be with us and show us the reason for, for our own existence. And that, dear Lord, as we would have tasted and see that you are good, that we will go forward in spreading the good news and let someone also rejoice because they too have found hope in Jesus Christ. And dismiss us with your blessing, we pray. For this we ask and tell you thanks in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And amen. And do enjoy the rest of your evening. This is him, 388. Don't forget the Sabbath. Don't forget the Sabbath. The Lord our God has blessed of all.
27 says rejoice ye pure in heart rejoice give thanks and sing your festal banners wave on high the cross of Christ your king 27 